Can a mu'min feel depressed? A person of Iman can never be depressed. This is what we are taught. And if he is depressed, some will argue that it is a sign, a definite sign of weak Iman. Is it always the case? And the answer has to be an emphatic no. People who say things like this, they may even use evidences to cite what is perhaps an unintentional misunderstanding. They may cite an ayah of the Quran where Allah Jalla Jalaluhu says, Inna ladheena amanu, those who have Iman, faith. وَعَمِنُ الصَّالِحَاتِ They do good deeds. وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ They establish the prayer. وَآتَوُ الزَّكَاةِ And they give out the charity. What is the outcome? لَهُمْ أَجُرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ They will have their reward with Allah. وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ They will have no fear. وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ They will not grieve. So they will say this is an evidence that a person of Iman and good deeds who stays away from sins cannot feel fear and should not feel sadness. Though this was not the way that our classical scholars understood this ayah. They understood this ayah as being a description of the situation of a believer with Allah in the home of the hereafter, not here in dunya. So those people who do these good deeds that you heard being listed in the ayah, لا خوف عليهم They will have no fear, meaning when they pass away, there is no fear with respect to what awaits them in the hereafter. ولا هم يحزنون And they will not feel sorrow, meaning they will not be saddened about what they have left behind in dunya. So it's not a description of how a person person is a mu'min in the life of this world, a believer in this world, a prophet in this world, a messenger, a wali, a saint in this world, a siddiq in this world. This is the cream of the crop, the gold standard of humanity. They may grieve and they may experience sorrow and it may prolong and it may debilitate them during a period in their lives. It's a test from Allah Jalla Jalaluhu that increases the believers in rank for those who are patient and those who translate their sadness into a correct behavior. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he not grieve? Was he not beset by setbacks, back-to-back -back setbacks in his life when he lost his uncle, his exterior form of defense, and he lost Khadija radiallahu anha, his interior form of defense and his support, and the persecution in Mecca and his companions that were being tortured in front of his blessed eyes alayhi salatu was salam did he not feel sorrow yes he did in fact his sorrow was such that the historians they looked at this period in the seerah this is specifically year 10 after the first revelation they called it amul huzun the year of sorrow and notice this is the very same year by the way that he was taken during the isra and the mi'raj trip that was the same year allah almighty honored him to raise his morale and he took him from mecca to palestine to lead the prophets there in masjid al-aqsa and from there he was taken into the seven heavens to meet his brothers and to see the angels and to meet allah Allah said, we showed him from the major signs of Allah, the dominions of the heavens and the earth. And he spoke to Allah Almighty without a middleman. Yet no historian looked at this period in the history and said, Amul Mi'raj, this is the year of the ascension. No, they called it a year of sorrow to show you that he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is fully human. And then the Prophet of Allah, Yaqub, Jacob, father of Prophet Yusuf, the go-to case study for those who are down, Surah to Yusuf and the father Yaqub and the sorrow he expressed. Allah Almighty said that Prophet Yaqub experienced the following, وَتَوَلَّ عَنْهُمْ He turned away from his sons. This was after they let him down and they threw Yusuf in the well and news had come to him that he had disappeared and bin yameen was detained he turned away from his sons he said how intense is my asaf over yusuf which meant what sadness that is manifested through rage he was upset with his sons because they were the cause of this and his eyes became white because of huzun sadness and therefore he is suppressing, meaning suppressing his grief and suppressing his anger. Then his sons, they look at their father who they see is literally dying in grief, brothers, sisters. They said to him, Allahi, we swear by Allah. Yusuf. You're going to continue remembering Yusuf till your body wastes away. Or you die. They're saying, Dad, you're on the verge of dying because of grief. You've withered away. You've lost your weight. And we see that death is near because of grief. Do you know any person in your life who suffered so much sorrow that he or she cried till they lost? their vision and then we say that grief cannot be for a believer and then he says to his son beware of thinking that I'm complaining to you or that I am in doubt of my Lord or somehow I have despaired he said to them I complain of my bath the sorrow that permeates and the sorrow that lingers I complain of my bath وحزني, and my huzun my sadness to Allah alone
and I know of Allah that which you do not know. Conclusion, we cannot go to this side of the spectrum and say every time someone exhibits sadness, lingering grief that debilitates him or her, it must be a sign of weak, frail, damaged iman or a sin in their lives. That's not always an accurate thing to say. But of course, we have to also say that on the other side of the spectrum, the unfashionable statement that weak iman and disobedience to Allah has an effect on the overall well-being of a believer. Don't judge people as having weak iman. Agreed. But don't forget the other side that say you are sins and weak iman that's unmanaged and unserviced will have an effect on your overall well-being. And that is why Allah Almighty said, Allah said, No, their hearts have been covered with a ran, with a covering, because of what they used to do. The human heart has been created for one purpose, and that is to recognize Allah and to glorify Him, to fill it with His remembrance. However, if you were to use any aspect of your human body in a way that is contrary to the purpose that Allah Almighty created it for, it will damage, it will be damaged. Try drinking by pouring water through your ear, try eating by rubbing food into your eye, the outcome will be damaged to both. Why? Because the ear is designed to receive sound, not fluid. The eye is designed to receive light, not food. And similarly, fill the heart with sayyat, fill the heart with Netflix, fill the heart with TikTok, fill the heart with other than Allah, fill the heart with haram relationships, and watch how it will begin to cave in, and you will be down. Because the heart was created for one thing, it is compatible with the remembrance of Allah. It wants to glorify him.